different church? I was in, um, I was in the same church for many years, uh, with my family and I did not leave until like two weeks before, um, I was married and part of that was due to the authority structure. I felt like I would have been sinning if I did anything different. Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back to my channel. It's Thursday, January 26, 2023. I have some tea for you and it comes straight from a podcast interview that Ginger Duggar Volo completed or did with Ellie Stuckey, a Christian blogger, vlogger, podcast extraordinaire. Ginger has done an interview with People Magazine and it looks like she'll be sitting down with ABC News. But in this podcast, she actually sits down with Allie, who comes from a conservative Christian background and does a lot of stuff on the Bible on her own podcast. So in this podcast, she actually talks a little bit more about the theology of growing up under Bill Gothard and how it looked like in her home. And while I'm not gonna dive into the entire 46 minute interview, there was a part towards the end of the interview that I thought was pretty interesting because I think it'll help some of you understand what is going on with Jana Duggar. While she doesn't specifically call out Jana's name and doesn't even say anything about her siblings, I think when you think of the children and how much they don't speak out and how guarded they are and how they all stay at home, you might better understand why Jana at 33 hasn't left the confines of her house and doesn't think that she can. So, this has actually been a pretty eye-opening experience for me because I'm seeing a whole new side of Ginger. While I've been kind of critical and at times kind of like, I don't know what her motives are here because it's the Duggars, um, it's been pretty refreshing to hear her take on Bill Gothard. It's been refreshing to hear her actually say the words of how his beliefs are ridiculous and how they don't make sense and they're not biblical. And she even like at one point during this podcast talks about the weird tangents that he goes on and how he constantly will try to think he has the fix for everything. Like he's the miracle cure basically for Christians. And it was very refreshing to hear that. It was also refreshing to hear her call him Bill because the whole family actually calls him Mr. Gothard or Dr. Gothard. So it tells me that she has very little regard for him. But it was towards the end of this uh, podcast where she spoke a little bit about what it was like for her to grow up. Now imagine you are in your 20s and you are so dedicated to the Bible, dedicated to your faith, that you are so paralyzed by the fear that you live under because of the umbrella of authority that if you make one single mistake, something bad is going to happen to you. And then also believe that because of the umbrella of authority, your parents are basically the priests and in charge of your life. You might feel like you don't know how to do anything in your life and you can't ask questions and you can't do anything because you don't want to get outside of that umbrella and have something bad for you. We've talked a lot about the umbrella of authority and how it controls children because they truly believe if they step out of line, it's akin to witchcraft, it's akin to Satan, it's like the devil is gonna come attack you. And this was something that Ginger actually talked about. Right. And I probably, looking back, I probably could have asked my parents, hey, could I go over to my brother-in-law and sister's church, which is an awesome reformed church and solid preaching. But I just, another another layer of that was like, am I going to be under God's authority and protection um, or am I dishonoring God by by doing that? And it was actually pretty impressive because she talked about what they think about women in this church, in this belief system. Let's dive into this video, but of uh, Ginger explains what it's like to live under the Gothard isms and why Jana might stay. Um, but before we do, can you do me, uh, could you please give this video a thumbs up? Also subscribe to my channel if you have not yet subscribed. Turn your notifications on so you know when I go live or new content loads by clicking on the bell. And always make sure to share this video with your friends and leave a comment if you have something to say. So this is 
well into the second half of the interview. The first half, she talks a lot about how she got out of the beliefs, how they actually watched like a lot of the Gothard uh, seminars with Jeremy and dissected every single aspect of the seminars where she finally sort of woke up to the realization that, oh my gosh, this isn't even biblical to the point of now today as a almost approaching 30 years old in her life and she is not living in fear anymore but it was that same fear that kept her paralyzed and at her parents church until two weeks before she even left the home yep that's right she was so afraid to even go outside of that umbrella of authority that she stayed in a belief system that she didn't necessarily believe in shocking right after she reveals the part about growing up, not leaving the church, she then goes on to say this. Um, because adult kids, even women, can't ever have a job outside the home. You can't, um, well, you can't work outside the home, but you can't live outside of the home either. Until you're married. Until you're married, mm -hmm. then that transfers to your husband. So for a large part of this interview, she really talked about, in a lot of different ways, how devout she was to this belief system and how much she stood by these beliefs because she felt like this is what she was raised in. It was the only thing that she knew. Uh, this is what their church was. They didn't really go to church. They literally just watched Gothard's videos, which I've actually told you. Can I just say that I'm? it's so refreshing to hear her admit to things that I have reported on for years that they've denied or people around them will deny and say that I'm lying. It's, it's very validating to know that the people that are talking to me are telling me the truth and that it's not this fallacy that they grew up watching Gothard videos, that that, the, that was their church and that they couldn't leave home because of this and this is how the house was controlled. It's validating to know that the information I'm getting is truthful and then it's validating to see her admit it in a way where she's no longer protecting the lie. And the lie was that we can do whatever we want. We choose to do this. It's because we want to. Well, no, she's saying as adult women, we're not allowed to go outside of the house. We can't have jobs outside of the home. We have to stay at home until we're married and until it can transfer to our husbands. Because in the teachings of Bill Gothard, his belief is that a woman on her own right cannot ever be a headship in any capacity. And because she's incapable of taking care of herself, incapable of making decisions for herself, incapable of protecting herself, she has to always have a man to be under. And it's ridiculous because then he will, in his seminars, give stories about adult women that move out and live on their own. And then he will correlate that to saying she then uh, ended up becoming pregnant and she got a disease and she died. And it's all because she disobeyed her parents. So there's always this like real, like this wormhole he goes down to with these fake stories he tells you about how if you do that, something bad is going to happen to you. So here she is saying, I couldn't leave because of this. And I, it had to be transferred to my husband. And it's now where they start talking a little bit more about age. Your husband. Even if you're 40. No, even if you're 40, you, you should remain at home. And mm -hmm. otherwise... It's this umbrella of authority that Bill Gothard taught mm -hmm. is that God is here. He's up here. And then your parents are here and you're below that umbrella. If you come out from under their authority by moving out of the home, by getting a job, then you're opening yourself up to Satan's attacks because you don't mm -hmm. have an umbrella at you. So that's what I believed wholeheartedly. And that's why I stayed. So mm -hmm. the way she explains it is what we've talked about on this channel a million different times. And we've said, this is why Anna stays. This is why Jana stays. This is why the kids don't speak out because of the umbrella of authority. They are indoctrinated and brainwashed to believe that if they defy Jim Bob, who is their headship, that they will become outside the, of protection. Without protection, Satan can get their strongholds inside their hearts and change their heart they can the safeguards the bumpers are gone and they can fall into witchcraft they can fall into 
financial ruin, they can fall into death, they can fall into a whole host of things that he tells kids that if you don't obey your family, this bad thing's gonna happen. Now, it might work for a kid when they're younger, but when you paralyze an adult that way, then you're actually creating a very unhealthy codependent relationship between an adult child and a parent where the adult child has no skills to actually move on because they think if they do, something catastrophic is gonna happen to them, even though it doesn't if they leave. But it's that fear that keeps them stuck. And so we think about this when we think about the kids that have not spoken out against Josh or have not said anything about Ginger's book. I'm assuming if we go by the same testimony by Ginger, they are afraid that if they say something that they know Jim Bob doesn't approve of, something bad will happen to them. Now, in the case of Jim Bob, he takes this to a level of extreme and he will do things to punish. Kids will end up getting shunned. They will get financial things happen to them. So in one breath, you have her saying, well, Gothard would say these things would happen. And in another breath, you actually have the father or the parents implementing that by cutting them off financially, by labeling them dangerous, by calling them witch, you know, rebellious witchcraft Satan people. You know, they are no longer safe to the community because they have thought for themselves. But the weird thing is, is as more people leave and nothing bad happens to them in the 21st century that we're in today, you can't keep up any, like the cult can't keep up with technology. So it's gonna have to evolve and change or it's gonna have to continue to keep kids away from the internet because this is the advent of the world where they can go online now and they can find anything and they can find information about if this is real and they can find survivors that have left and see if they've if bad things have happened to them did they get cancer did they become ugly did their fingers fall off did they lose all their money or did they find success did they have a happy family did they find something else in their lives that makes them happy? Did they find freedom? Now, whether you agree with her current church or not, and whether you believe that her current church is as bad as Gothard and you think she's traded one cult for another, it's very evident to me that at least some of that very legalistic bondage that she had under Gothard is slowly gone for her and it, she said it took a long time and you're hearing her speak in a more dynamic way she sounds a hell of a lot more intelligent she isn't afraid to say what she thinks she said before she didn't know what to say or what to think because she was afraid of doing anything can you imagine living in that kind of fear and she even talked about how hard it was for her to interact with people after she left her parents church because she literally had no social skills check it out. I went and joined that church. And yeah, there were there, I write more about this in the book, the challenges I had relationally with people just trying to figure out how to be real and honest and vulnerable and open up to those people was a challenge. But the word of God that I was hearing was different than what I had heard at my previous church. It's amazing the theme of the story being about God and not about like, Oh, I'm going to pull out a verse to improve my life for today. And then I'm going yeah. to move on. It, that's how I always view the Bible. And so my view of God completely changed once I was in that solid setting. So remember how the Duggars have always said that they look to the Bible as a self-help book. And it's like they go to the Bible for their verse to tell them what to do. And that's their guide for the life, right? And remember how I've said on this channel a million times that the Bible is the gospels of Jesus Christ, the letters from Paul to the different cities in ancient Roman um, in the ancient Roman Empire it is testimonies from his apostles it is the old testament it is not necessarily designed to be specifically a self-help book and while there's great amazing thoughts in there and there's a lot of great lessons it's not a self-help book and so to hear her actually say, 
it's not pulling out a verse and saying, this is what's going to help me today and this is why I'm doing what I'm doing in a self-help type of way. She's actually learning and hearing the stories. And that's awesome. That's awesome. What I do hope is that she doesn't get stuck in some of the doctrine of MacArthur where he actually adds a lot of layers of legalism. There is a lot that can be said as, I have a lot of followers and I just wanna say this, that like we'll constantly say like, I don't need a church to be a Christian because truthfully, I just need a relationship with God and I need my Bible. And I would say that if I were to ever go back to believing, that's exactly what I would do because I'm a non-believer. But I do think the Bible has amazing uh, lessons in it. And I, I believe there are there's beauty in the words. Uh, I have a beautiful pink Bible. <laughs> it's It's gorgeous, actually. And I think... There's a lot that can be said about taking these lessons and applying them to life, but not using it as a self-help thing. You know what I'm saying? So when she realized that it was about learning about Jesus and learning about God in life and the story of Jesus, her view changed about God. So when you stop using it for self-help and you just use it for your faith, pretty amazing what can happen. Now, she still lives under a lot of rules, so we'll see more. And I'm, I keep hoping that I'm going to get the book soon, but I haven't gotten it yet, guys. Um, but once I do get it, we'll go through this on the channel. And finally, I just want to say that if you're now wondering why Anna Duggar hasn't left Josh and why Jana Duggar hasn't moved out of her home, this is it. Anna believes that if she leaves Josh, she is leaving her umbrella of authority. She believes that because she's a woman, she cannot step outside of that umbrella and she believes that bad things will happen. She will also believe that because of her own misdeeds, because he is above her, she caused him to stumble because it's always the woman's fault. It's never the man's fault. That's a huge flaw in the teachings of Gothard. There's no accountability for the men ever. Why does Jana stay? Because she still probably believes under this doctrine because she hasn't left home yet, that she can't leave home that she's 33 and she's basically incapable of leaving home. She can't hold a job because why? Because women in this group are not allowed to have jobs outside of the home and they're not allowed to have jobs while they work, live with their parents. So what is Jana's job? To take care of the kids, to be a help meet to Jim Bob and to not leave until she has another headship to go to. What does this mean for a woman that never marries? That they stay home with their parents for the rest of their lives. What does this mean for a child that might be gay? And I'm not implying that Jana is, but I'm just saying like, what if a child were gay? What would they do? Well, they have two options. They either go into a heterosexual relationship and they completely ignore how they feel, or they stay celibate and single and they stay at home. Now, Jana has been in relationships in the past. Uh, she has dated several different men. So it's not for a lack of suitors, I don't know at this point if, if it's that she has fear of going into the outside, she hasn't found the right match, but she stays home because she's afraid if she doesn't, if she leaves, that she will get attacked by Satan. And that's really the basics. So tell me what your thoughts are about all of this in the comments below. Bye guys.